Today I will be going over the level 1 information functions in Excel. Some of them are pretty useful, others you won't find yourself using as much, but I want to give you an introduction to them so you're familiar with them. Although I have the cell function on the left, I'm actually going to start with the functions to the right, is blank, is error, is text, is non-text, etc. Because I find that it's easier to explain than cell, and I'll spend the last half of the video explaining cell. First, the is blank function will check any reference to see whether the cell is blank or if it is not blank. So here you see I've already have G41, this blank cell, as what I'm checking in the is blank formula, and you'll see that that comes up with true. Conversely, if I look at G39 in this is blank formula, which has the spanned rules in it, it'll say false because it is not blank. All of these functions you can use when you're going through a large data set and you have to check for various properties of the cell and have the formula do something based off that information. So let's say if it's a blank cell, leave it, the result as blank. If it has text, maybe look that text up in a table. There are many different options for how you can control the formula once you know what type of cell you're looking at. Is error is similar. It'll check if the cell is an error. So you'll see here I have an error cell, giving out that division by zero error. And you'll see here it comes out as true because it is an error. If I point to another cell that has just text in it, it will say false because it's not an error. Is text, as you can probably imagine, ch takes whatever's in the reference and tells you whether it is a text cell. So hello over here. If I hit enter, it'll be true for is text. If I looked at that number over there, three, negative 3,000, that will not be text, so it will come up as false. Is non-text kind of reverses the last formula we looked at and wants to find out whether it isn't text. So if we look at the same one from before, negative 3,000, that should come up as true because it is not text. And hello here, we look up, you can tell is text, so it'll come up as false for is non-text. Lastly of these is the is number function. This will tell you whether a cell contains a number or not. So here we look at that negative 3,000 and it comes back as true. But if we looked at this band rules, let's say, it'll come up as false. Now we'll move on to the cell function, which actually has a lot of different uses depending on which, which information type you want to use for it. You'll see if I go in and type equals cell with an open parentheses, there's a drop down list of possible info types which I have shown down below. So depending on which info type you choose, it'll give you a different piece of information about the cell. First I'll start with the address info type. You'll see if I look at cell C39 which has hello in it, I have equals cell address in quotes comma C39. That returns the address of the cell in question. So C39 which is, has the dollar signs which means it's an absolute reference. Similarly, you can get the row by using the row info type, which will come back as 39. For column, you write col instead of c-o-l-u-m-n, and it will give it to you as a number, not a letter. So 3 is the number for column C. If you use contents in quotes, it will tell you what is in the cell in question, which is hello. With will give you the width of the cell in integers. So it's 24 here, but even if it was a little bit more than 24, it would still show up as just the integer. I'll add a few more so you can see that. So it'll just show you the, the closest whole number. Most frequently, you'll see the cell function being used to generate a file name, and some portion of that file name can be extracted from it. So you'll see here, if you use file name in quotes of cell C39, you'll see that it tells me that it's in the C drive, in the classes folder. The file itself is called Excel Exposure Master Workbook 91212, and it'll even tell me that we're on sheet 4 function examples, which you can see down here. Using that, you can extract certain information from the full file name, such as the sheet name or the workbook if you wanted to put that into a cell. So here in cell C49 I have a formula, a mid formula, that extracts the file name from the cell. And many times you'll find people using the cell formula just for that, just to extract either the file name 
itself or the sheet name. In this case, the mid formula looks through, finds where the first open bracket is and the second open bracket is, and it grabs all of the text in between. So you'll see here that in between the open bracket and closed bracket is the name of our file. And that's typically what you see the cell function used for mostly. There are a few more info types of the cell function that are a bit more bizarre that aren't used as frequent, but I'll go through them real quick. Since they're a bit more complicated, I've put a comment into each of these cells that dictates what it will spit out as an answer. So here for the cell color one, it'll return a number 1 if the number is colored when negative and 0 otherwise. So here you'll see it comes out as 0. We're doing it of this negative 3000. But if I were to change the format of this negative 3000 and made it so that it was colored when negative, you'll see that when I hit calculate the color comes up with 1 because it is in fact colored when negative. I'm not sure entirely why you would want to use that but that's what the color function does in, within cell. Format is a bit more complicated. You'll see I have this table to the right which I will drag over here. This has all of the different codes and the format equivalent related to the cell format. So right now I'm looking at cell C41 and it comes up with D4 since it's a date and D4 here shows a few multiple date formats. If I change the cell that I'm looking at to be this number here instead you'll see that it has C2 minus which shows on the right as a number format with red negative numbers and includes parentheses surrounding them. This could be useful if you're going through a workbook and trying to figure out all the different formatting that you have. It'll spit out these codes that you can then refer to them by and start cleaning up your workbook to fit certain formats that you find work better. I'll leave this format table here so you know what it does and you can play around with that on your own time. The, the cell prefix function. This will look at a group of text and tell you which way it is aligned. So if it is left aligned, it will be a single quote. If it is right aligned, it will be a double quote. It will be a caret if it's centered, and a backslash if it's fill aligned, with empty text, meaning if it has anything but one of those types of text. Here you see I'm looking at hello, which shows up as a single quote because it's left aligned. If I center it, you'll see that it turns into this caret. And if I do right aligned, it should go to double quotes. And you'll see that it does. So if you're looking through a group of cells and you want to make sure they're all formatted the same way, you, you could find out its alignment through the cell prefix function. Cell protect is pretty straightforward. It is a 1 if the cell is locked and a 0 if it is not. So you see I'm looking at this 3000. If I right click, and I go to format cells there's a protection tab and you'll see that it currently is locked if I unlocked it and hit OK and hit calculate that changes to zero so zero if it is not I'll change it to hello and you'll see that it will come up as one cell type this will give you three different an answers B if it is a blank cell L if it is a constant text label and V if it is something else. So currently I'm looking at hello and it comes up with an L for label. If I change it to this negative 3000 you'll see that it comes up with a V for anything else. If I then moved it over to the blank cell we have over here and hit enter it'll come up with a B. Again these are the information functions so you can get some information about what is in the cell and how it is formatted. So I hope you found that useful. Remember to download the latest master workbook so you can check this out for yourself. Thanks.